picture this, the concept, for visual artists to create artworks to form a virtual exhibition based on the work of another kind of creative, in this case, poets. Eight poets responded to the theme of secret places, something we all have in one form or another in our lives. These poems were then passed anonymously to visual artists who responded both to the words of the poems and to their own feelings about the theme in producing their images. Three artists responded to each poem, each bringing their own interpretation to the words. The artists were unaware who the authors of their assigned poems were until after creating their artworks. Each poem will be read aloud by its author as we see what the visual artists have created in response. Hello, welcome to Picture This Secret Places. I'm Sarah Fletcher, the curator of this virtual exhibition project, and I've contributed both a poem and artworks to the exhibition. My roots are in South Australia, but I relocated to the UK five years ago, a journey which often influences my creation. I write words of many kinds, usually influenced by nature or human nature, and I illustrate them in watercolour, ink and coloured pencil. I also love bringing other creatives together to produce projects like this one. The other poets and artists involved are each going to tell you a bit about themselves, and then we'll have a look at what the team has created. So relax and enjoy! Hi, I am Kiara Abakin, and I am a poet based in Manila, Philippines. I will be contributing poetry for this exhibition. I wanted to write a piece about a secret in plain sight. Most poets have an ocean poem, but it fascinates me that a place so universally loved and frequently visited can still give each person an intimate and unique experience. Hi, I'm Margaret Fletcher, an artist from Adelaide. Last year, I rekindled my passion for painting after many years. I'm inspired by nature and my surroundings especially when I'm hiking. Environments change through the seasons and give you so many options. I draw on these experiences and try to reflect them in my creations. I definitely enjoy a challenge. So for this exhibition, I've tried to interpret the essence of the poems in my paintings. I've chosen Cancer Council essay for my charity. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, a part-time writer from McLaren Vale, South Australia. I've contributed a poem for this exhibition and I hope this poem gives you a sense of places, feelings and memories that are secretly special only to me. Hi, I'm Georgia from Southampton. I'm one of the visual artists taking part. I mostly paint portraits using acrylic paint with an abstract pop art sort of style and loads and loads of colour. Uh, finished pieces will be available for sale with all proceeds going to the NHS. My name is Clara Little and I live in Tasmania, Australia. I am very privileged to have this opportunity to contribute to this collaborative endeavour with my poem titled Wonderland. Wonderland is a poem that explores the idea that magical places exist within ourselves and in others. Whether these experiences are conjured through our imagination or through physical sensation, our lives embody secret places and untold stories, often intensified by music and language. Hi there, my name is Emma Morrissey and I'm a fine artist based in the UK. So for this collective exhibition, I will mainly be contributing artwork, but I've also contributed one of my poems as well. As a fine artist, I have always preferred to use pencil. But recently I have been using all sorts of different mediums, including watercolour, pastel and ink. So one of the things that I've decided to do for this exhibition 
is to uh, focus on the illustrative and surrealist side of artwork. So those will be some of the themes that you will see in my artwork. My name is Laurel and I live in Southampton. For this exhibition, I'll be sharing a poem. My name is Emily McCallan and I'm an artist and a filmmaker and I'm currently studying conservation biology. So I'm really interested in the relationships that people have with nature and environment. Several of the poems that I received as part of this exhibition had this really strong sense of lushness and uh, an emotional intensity that I really loved and I wanted to be able to combine those things in some way. Hi, I'm Ray. I'm based in Southampton in the UK. For this project, I'm really pleased to have contributed both poetry and artwork, and it's been really great to have the opportunity to work in dialogue with other artists and writers for this exhibition. What really interested me about this particular theme was the process of arriving at Secret Places itself, the journey of discovery, and the juxtaposition against the ordinary. I was really looking at the sensations that are invoked when we uncover the hidden. Hey, my name is Kat. I'll be contributing paintings to this exhibition. I'm from Bulgaria, however now I'm based in Christchurch, New Zealand. The main driver of my creativity has been exploring new places and communities. Nature is a predominant subject in my art. In my paintings, I like to use bold colors and pay close attention to line work and brush strokes. I work mainly with acrylics, yet sometimes I make murals or work digitally. I love poetry, and sometimes I do write poems in my native language, but this is the first time that my paintings will be inspired by poems. I hope you will enjoy our collaborative project. I'm a writer, working under the pseudonym Yelling Mouse. My poetry helps me process feelings that make me feel very small, or very adamant about being heard. I find a lot of my writing centres around mental health, and this is no exception. I wanted to play with the idea that present thoughts and memories can be just as tangible as the roots we leave behind us physically. Hello, my name is Ella. Currently, I'm based in Romania. For this virtual exhibition, I will contribute with three artworks. My mediums often include acrylics, oil, watercolor pen and pencil. I usually enjoy creating art in an abstract or surrealist way, depicting my feelings and impressions of the places I once visited, about nature, history and humankind. But for this exhibition, I try to illustrate abstractly the emotions and feelings I had while reading the three amazingly written poems. To the sunlight, slicing across the scene below, highlighting and burning. It remembers everything, you know. I am there for its unveiling, its cloaked and covered days. For when it is grey, cold and raining, its voice is heard in other ways. Nestled within the growth, the floor beds settling around the tears from a tired sky. Oh, so silent. 
the joy of the warm glow as people pass slowly by into lush, mossy tapestries, a hole in the barked embrace, a home for animals and lushness, every season a slow or hurried pace. I don't forget this place now, it's etched forever on my skin, within the neurons of my brain, every time I walk, the roots are set deep within. The world's worst kept secret swallows me in aquamarine. The salt sweet against pruning, smiling skin. Everyone's home now, but my thoughts keep bubbling, a ceaseless diadem. Tell me I'm not flying over sunken ships, over jellyfish and coral labyrinths, exhaling into the sea's mysteries. Trench chants punctuated by glittering fins, it inhales my confession. Our breath spans nations, overriding centuries worth of sailor tales on their riptide. I break through the sunset lattice surface, and my joy ripples. Secret places. In my wake are traits I'd rather walk away from. Hesitation, shame, self hate, the weight of which I cannot shake. Secret places suffocate me, haunt me, leave their graves to stalk me. In ways I am a slave to every stage I have escaped. But make no mistake. I forsake the urge to trade myself for flimsy validation, worthless as the chains you rooted in the earth to make me stay. You may have mutilated, underestimated, raised me to be vacant, violated, scared, but lately, all my destinations find the traces of your hateful limitations fading. There's a place where time ceases to exist if you need it to, where barefoot you walk into a verdant retreat, lush and overgrown. Your skin is tickled by Queen Anne's lace, your breath taken away by untamed lavender. Here, the sun shines in hushed golden streams, almost too shy to disturb the serenity, with only the subdued song of a goldfinch or two as company. You'll find me life in single digits, I'm spinning in circles, mirthful laughter, I'm dreaming, it is possible to stretch my noble knees until I reach into the troposphere to ask the sky to please let me perch on her candy floss clouds. In this haven, I am royalty, not subject to anyone's ruling. I can pick a daffodil to turn into a ring around my finger or a buttercup crown to adorn my curls. And here, a sunflower makes a worthy scepter. And when I sense calls threatening to take me away, I build a nest inside an oak tree, finding safety in his concave. A steel blanket, threadbare tartan, right from underneath the watchful presence of my mother figure, and I shove them into a space to fold myself into. When I return, white socks stained green, twigs in unruly hair, a furtive smile dancing on my lips and they ask, and where have you been? I glance back where I came, into a horizon they could never see, not with their jaded eyes and limbs too worn to twirl with me, and I say, I never left.
My dreams were ever filled with private passages, undergrowth palaces, eerie caverns storing secret plunder of heart and of creation, of magic and of monsters it made and masked, woods that only I could wander, to lie, lost and glad of it, sequestered projects shrouded behind hedge screens. In life I've never stopped expecting them, watching wistfully the shadows under stairs, the turn of a short hollowway, the missing stone in a creeper-cluttered cottage wall, waiting, half believing, these are veils, lace curtains, hanging on a hidden world. And there by lucky accident I'd trip, catch you by the fingers in the fall, grow over the chipped paint from the inside with weeping wisteria tears, scented and soft, strong to buoy us up when we re-entered the real. The threads of worn red earth paths and the gaps in time-weary stones have yet to be my doorways dreamed, and still I look, worn out with a half-imagined hope. Believe me that cartography surfaces land and earth like it stretches minds, deep enough to captivate both stockbrokers and artisans, and deep enough to tether tomorrow's sunrise. And trust in this, the right to roam, trespass, brush against the grain, board the wrong flight home, embrace all the terror incognitia you can muster as her cool weighs heavy in your pelvis. And believe me that even the uninvited paths fold outwards. Within the thickest of thickets, too hostile to broach, laden with tender fruits, glimmering trinkets for your troubles, ready to melt upon weary and parched tongues. And finally, picture this. When a woman with shoulders so etched and raw seemingly stumbles into a forest alive, with air in its lungs, she broaches a homeland anew. A homeland as wild and free as she. Remember with intention. It is never with regret that I leave here to walk the sun-painted beach with bare toes and head, to be cross-legged or star-fished out in wild reeds by the river end. It is never with regret that I tune out your voices and hear the noisy trees whispering wistfully and the magpies marvelling at my inability to really hear. When I cover my face and leave your smell of broken promises, I go to where there's Italian kitchen bread and French coffee, Chinese jasmine and the stable, and freesias unseen in the bushes, and freshly washed Cousin Jack crying for Ted. If I hold my breath, I remember chocolate strawberries, and my fingers taste like vinegar and roast chicken. I can lick cut peaches and caramel with my quiet tongue and I encounter salt spray, tropical rain, herd dust, and the lemon tree. It is never with regret. White-fleshed and sunny-yoked, your golden centre buds arose. New grows naked among ears of wheat, spring in rows of syllables, kernels scatter with the wind. The weather cultivates the field, one orchard flourishes alongside, the grove becoming thick, 
stone fruits plump to ripen in the sun. Sun becomes song as song becomes air, travelling like heat in the body, a rising warmth, a flood in the darkness, where it settles, knowingly, unknowingly, slowly, layer upon layer, where it folds over a page, turns into a street, and returns to an ending. Secret places. We all have them, be they the hidden corners or tree houses of childhood, imagined lands we escape to for calm inside our minds, or our own special slice of the world where we go for space and to dream. Thank you for sharing your time with us today as we've delved into the secret places, reminisced and lived of our eight poets and our eight artists' interpretations of their words coloured by the lenses of their own secret places over time. We hope it's brought you calm, connection and wonder, perhaps creating, for a while, a secret place for all of us to share. <laughs>